Hello, this is Lisa Foreign Brilliance, and this video is going to show you some interesting techniques using the Embrilliance Enthusiast software stitch editing features. We start with a simple lettering object created from Embrilliance Essentials and turn it into a striped candy cane lettering design. Let me show you how. So here we have our design, finished design, so that you have an idea of what our plan is for creating this embroidery design. It has multiple designs located together. One is our basting box, which we added from Essentials under the utility menu, excuse me. Then we have our merged in holly leaf design. We have our white lettering, and then we have our red lettering so that our design will stitch in a logical order. So let's start from scratch. Here is what we want to create. Let me show you how. Step one is create a new design page. We're going to click on the lettering tool and we're going to type in holiday into the lettering properties pane and choose the university font from the font list. Now this is one of the built-in fonts in Embrilliance Essentials, so it has more properties in that I can size this and um, it will automatically recalculate the stitches because it is a built-in font. It has more control of the underlay properties, etc. The one thing that it does have also is this is a lettering object. So when I look at my object pane, there's no disclosure triangle to it because I have properties that are allowed to be changed, such as the slant, the sizing, the curving, etc. So I am making a conscious decision that I want to do stitch editing on this, which means I will no longer be able to do lettering tools with it because I'm going to break it up into multicolors, which the color of this design right now it has one color. You can't have multiple colors in a lettering object that wasn't digitized to have multiple colors. So while I have this selected, when I right click on my selection, the pop-up menu comes up that says convert to stitches. This is going to basically remove all of the lettering properties and just create an embroidery design. This allows me to now have a disclosure triangle with the various colors, but my lettering properties are now gone, so I don't have to worry about them anymore. I'm ready to continue and do my stitch editing. This requires me to go, first of all, I'd like to make sure that we zoom in on what it is that we're working on so we have a, a closer look. I'm going to go into stitch editing, which is part of Enthusiast. When I click on the stitch editing tab, our menu has menu bar has changed and it has various tools for selecting your stitches. The first one, which is a freehand select, this allows you to basically create a lasso or freehand selection around the stitches that you want to select. When you release your mouse button, they are selected. You can see they're highlighted and you can hit the delete key on your keyboard. It's a great way of taking parts of a design and removing them or copying and pasting them into some other design page. The other selection or ways of splitting, selecting stitches so that we can split them off is using the rectangle selection. Now this works very similarly in that you put your mouse cursor in a specific location around where you want to place it and draw a rectangle. So that bar that goes across the top of the rectangle is going to select stitches. So I am paying attention to where it crosses the bottom of the lowercase y. I don't want to be um, crazy and try and chop that A. I want to, my goal is to create a, a row of red stitching and it would make logical sense for it to end at the bottom of the Y. So I'm paying attention to where the top of my rectangle is. When I release my mouse button, all of those stitches are selected and I can use the red line split that will split these stitches with a clean edge across. So I now, when I go back into select mode, I can see that I have one design, the top part, and the second design is the bottom part. Now I'd like to create another split going across the H and the L and the D. So I'm going to go back into stitch editing, 
grab my rectangular select tool, click hold and drag my rectangle down. And this time I'm paying attention to the top of the bar of the letter H because I don't want to grab any of those stitches by accident. When I release my mouse button, I notice that none have been selected. I use the red split and now I have three sets of designs, the top, the bottom, and the, um, the lower section. It's easier to see if you're in select mode as opposed to looking while you're in stitch editing mode. So once we have it split, I want to make sure, or I want to start creating my design. First step is to change my colors. So I'm going to collect, select one of the designs, which happens to be the center of the word holiday. Click on my color chip, and I'm going to go and choose a color that is white. That's going to be the red, the white part of this. Now I'm going to select the other two by holding down the shift key and clicking. Click on the one color button, and that will allow us to go through and choose a color that is red for the uh, top part of our top and the bottom part, so as if to make a candy cane. I'm going to choose the Madeira Christmas Red. Click OK, and both of the colors have been changed automatically. Now when you look at this design, let's go back to the first one. You'll see that there are no connecting stitches in between any of the letters. First step of splitting splits the uh, stitches of each one of the legs of the H. Each one of the letters has been separated edited, stitch edited, split. And when you break a, an object, it will not automatically put jump stitches in because a jump stitch requires you to have tie offs on either end of it. And you have control in the um, stitch, um, enthusiast software to set long stitches as jump stitches. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first thing that we want to do though is to hide the white of our stitches. So I'm going to do, and the reason I want to hide them is because they, I just want to work on the red color at one time. So while they're selected, I'm going to click on the little uh, lock and hide button here on the top of my object pane and this will hide that center part of the stitches so that they're still there but I can't see them. But I can see the red perfectly well so that I don't have to get confused about anything. I'm going to go into stitch editing. When you put your mouse cursor on top of the long stitch in between the L and the D, you'll notice that there is one stitch that is highlighted in the D. That means that you are actually, you're going to select that thread that's going across it by left clicking on it one time. Notice at the top here, we have some information about that stitch. It's just a stitch, it has no special properties. If we right click on that selected stitch, there's a, a pop-up that says jump and ensure ties. When you choose that option, it allows you to it has changed that long thread to a jump stitch and has put tie offs on either location. So the steps that you take to do this would be left click on the long thread, right click on the long thread and choose jump and ensure ties. So that's one way of getting rid of these jump stitches. It will put tie offs in between and change them into long stitches. Now the letter H, well, let's look at our object pane here. And let's go into select mode so that we can see what we're looking at. The way that this design is going to stitch, it's going to stitch all the white first, then it's going to stitch all the bottom parts of the letters in red, and then it's going to go back and stitch all the top parts in red. And it might be nice for us to want to create individual letters. You may want to do this for a different project. So I would like to keep all these H's together. I want to make sure that they stitch out the top two and then the bottom two all at one time. So that moves from left to right. It's just, it looks, it's just a, I'm showing you a different option. So let's zoom in and look at that H a little more closely because stitch editing is most successful when you can actually see what you're working on. Now I'm going to go into stitch editing. 
I am going to use the rectangular tool to select each leg individually. So I'm going to drag my rectangle around this leg, select it, and then I'm gonna cut it and paste it. I use my keyboard commands, which are Control X for cut, or Command X if you are on a Mac, and then I'm gonna paste that selection or that, that cuts piece right back. So I'm gonna hit Command V, as in Victor. And notice, it has created a design or a set here 